Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be looking at Azure IoT Hub, and we're going to be talking about device simulators and messaging from the cloud to devices and devices to the cloud. Hi guys, today I'm going to do a brief video talking about Azure IoT Hub. I'm going to just show you how to set one of these up and how you can set up a device simulator so that you can get an idea of how a IoT setup is going to look like. So this is going to be basically an IoT Hub connected up to a service bus so that you can receive messages from the device simulator. And then what we'll do is we'll take the device simulator, wire it up to the IoT Hub, and then we'll be able to send messages from the device to the cloud and then see those in the service bus. And then we'll be able to see the IoT Hub actually send messages down to the device simulator as well. So this is going to be kind of looking at the two-way communication that an IoT Hub will get you. Of course, there's a lot of other features in IoT Hub that we'll be covering in future videos, but I wanted to do this one to kind of give you an introduction to the idea of what IoT Hub Hub is really all about and then how you can use it to get started with some of your IoT projects. So setting up an Azure IoT Hub is actually pretty straightforward in the Azure portal. I've already actually set one up that I've got um, wired up for my demo, but it's pretty straightforward to create one of these. You can just go right through the wizard, just type in IoT Hub here, and you will find the option and then you can create it. Now, the, the way you uh, the thing that's real important about this is basically having the name figured out that you have a unique name because that's what's going to be used in the connection stream whenever you go to wire up whatever it is that you're using with this particular IoT hub. Now, the device name, the whatever one you call it, I'm just going to call it IoT Demo 1 or something like that, and it will let you know if it's unique. So 123 um, is unique. So you can pick a region and then give it a name and then, of course, the the subscription you want to use. Now networking, you can have private endpoints for this if you want, but uh, you can have public endpoints as well. So I'm gonna use public because that's probably fine for what I'm doing here. Next to the tier, now this is basically just the quota of messages that you can use inside of a given tier. And you can use uh, different options for different ones here. And the one that you can use for development is this free tier which is fine for development purposes. I already have one because I'm using it on a per subscription basis. But if you're just doing development work, this one's probably fine. If not, you know, you can go with a basic one and that one will give you uh, just the basic option. And that one's you know going to be robust enough for development work as well. But the one that you'll probably want to use for production is probably a standard S1, S2, or S3. And that's because it's got a little bit more uh, robustness in terms of messaging and, you know, Defend it, defender right here that you can turn on it supports iot edge which we'll get to in a future video and other things like that so all in all it's probably the best one to use for uh that kind of purpose but free tier is probably gonna be more than enough for uh my development purposes since i already have one and once you have that done you can then do a review and create and it will create it so once you have your iot hub created you can go into the portal or you can manage this through another tool i'm using visual studio code for my device simulator uh, but you can also do a lot of the same things that we're going to be talking about here inside of Azure portal inside of Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to be using this because it's more familiar. So the Azure portal is probably going to be the tool that most people are going to be using to do this kind of stuff with anyway. Now, there's a lot of things about this. I'm not going to look at this video today, but I will be talking about a couple of things in future videos. But I wanted to talk about devices and message routing today because those are two of the core features of Azure IoT Hub. And devices is obviously you're going to be managing with an iot hub so you expect that to be there and the device management is pretty straightforward you just create devices here and they show up inside of this register and down here you have message routing which is how you get messages from devices into the cloud and we're going to get into that in just a minute but before we get too far ahead of ourselves in that context let's go and set up a device now i already have one set up right here uh, but it's really easy to do inside of the, the portal. And you can also do this through code. So you can use the SDKs to automatically register devices through uh, onboarding processes. And we'll get into device provisioning in other videos as well. But in this case, what we're looking at here is device ID. And uh, this is basically just to uniquely identify the device on the Azure IT Hub here. 
I'm going to call it device two. Now you can use different authentication types. Symmetric key is basically a generated key from IoT Hub that you can use to um, register the device and then uh, authenticate the device on IoT Hub. You can also use certificates. So you can use uh, public key infrastructure to generate keys, and then you can have the uh, self signed certs, or you can use uh, CA signed certs as well. Um, I'm going to be using symmetric keys because that's that was probably the easiest one to do uh, for you know dev test purposes, um, and and if for some production um, services as well. That's probably okay, depending on what your context is. But you know, certs are probably going to be more secure, but symmetric keys are fine for for a lot of applications as well. So I'm going to save this this right here and that's just going to create a device for me and um, it usually happens pretty quickly and you hit refresh here and now you can see that I have uh, two devices here device one device two now once I have my devices set up what I need to do is send messages either to the device uh, and that is called a cloud to device or a c2d message or I can send messages from a device, and that is a device to cloud message or a D2C message. So to do that, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code. Before I go over to Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna look at message routing first, because message routing is how you get messages off of an IoT hub into something that you can use. Now, there's a lot of different uh, services that you can route messages to, but the one thing that you don't wanna do is keep messages on IoT Hub and actually use it like a message bus. It, it's kind of got that concept where you can send messages to it, but it's really not intended to be the endpoint that you consume messages from. Rather, what you want to do is have IoT Hub send those messages onto something else so the messages can be processed. Now, typically that's either a service bus or an event hub. Now, you can use, there's a couple other things in here that you can look at, but the, the two that are primarily used, again, are Service Bus and Event Hub. So I've already set up a message route here using Service Bus, Service Bus queues really in particular. So to add one of these routes, you just click Add, and you can give it a name. So if I call it Route 2 or Route 1, whatever it might be, um, you can choose Storage. Uh, so you could send this into Blob Storage if you wanted to. Uh, service bus topic or queue and event hubs. So event hubs and service bus queues are typically the ones that are going to be used or topics uh, because that is going to be a more real time processing of messages. And these can be easily triggered by a lot of different other actions on Azure, such as Azure functions, you could do stream analytics, whatever it might be. Uh, and I have a whole video that I, we did on talking about IoT architecture. You can look at that, that will kind of discuss you know, when that you might want to use one or the other. And storage uh, might be useful if you just want to do cold path uh, type analysis on the messages that are coming off of your devices. But in any case, adding an endpoint is pretty straightforward. You basically you know, set up the endpoint, you choose where you want to send it, and once it's done, you hit save. And then you end up with an endpoint that looks like this one right here. Now, this one I have wired up to a service bus, as I said already. And uh, this one right here, um, you have a couple different kinds of messages you can send. I'm sending device telemetry messages to this. So that's basically you know, the device to cloud messages. And there's other things that you can have in here that are part of the SDK that we'll get into in other videos. But the, the twinning is important right here. And uh, digital twins um, and device twins are uh, the kinds of things that you use to maintain uh, state data about devices in the cloud so that you can have uh, device twins and digital twins available so that you can query the state of a device without actually having to query the device directly. And uh, when something changes on the device, it's nice to notify the cloud of those changes from the device so that you can um, update whatever you're managing in the cloud for twinning purposes. So that's what some of these are, are going to be right here. But in any case, that's... Um, what some of these other messages for, are for, but this one is probably the main one that most folks are going to be interested in, and that is the device telemetry messages. That is telemetry coming from the device to the cloud, and that's going to be different kinds of measurements that sensors are going to be picking up on, such as temperature, pressure, uh, humidity, maybe it's images. I don't know. There's a lot of different kinds of sensors out there that can read stuff, and then you can send up that telemetry however you want to from the devices that you're going to be using. Once you have that all set up, 
then you're good to go. You hit save and now your messages will be sent over to a service bus or an event hub and depending on whatever your context may be. So uh, I used an event hub and uh, sorry, a service bus. And that's really what I have set up right here. It's just a simple uh, queue. I called it uh, D2C, device to cloud. And I have already listening to this queue right here, uh, a, a listener right here, which is just basically listening for uh, messages from that. So uh, I guess I closed it. Let me just go ahead and create a queue listener here. And this is basically just going to start listening for messages on that queue. So what I would expect is when I run my device simulator is be able to send up messages uh, from the cloud, uh, from the device to the cloud, that is, and they show up here inside of this uh, listener right here. And then I can reverse that process and then I can send messages from my cloud instance back down to my device by way of cloud to device messages. So it's two-way communication through the event hub. Like I said, I'm using Visual Studio Code for my device simulator. And for that, I'm using this Azure IoT Hub extension for Visual Studio Code. And this is available in the Visual Studio Marketplace. And you can simply just install this. And once you install it, restart Visual Studio Code, and you will have an option to connect it up to your IoT Hub, which I'm gonna show you how to do in just a second. I've opened up Visual Studio Code now, and this is what I'm gonna use for my device simulator. Now, if you have something open, uh, Azure IoT Hub will typically be down in the lower left side. If this is all collapsed up, it'll be one of these options in Explore. So you can expand this, and I already have mine wired up to a, an IoT Hub here, but if you don't, you can click on this little ellipsis here, and you can then find your IoT Hub. You can select an IoT Hub, and it's basically just going to you know, choose a subscription. You're going to if you haven't already logged into Azure, you can log into that process. Uh, you can choose this one here, and then you can choose your your IoT Hub, which I've already wired, I've selected mine right here. So I have uh, this one right here, and you can see the devices I have. You can see device one, device two that I've set up, and you can you can kind of explore those by just uh, expanding the the options here and uh, you can expand the options on this one and there's there's a lot of uh, stuff here that you know we're not going to get into but in any case uh, we're looking at you know devices today and here you can see the the endpoints uh, that you have you know, I have service bus um, wired up here that's the one I wired up inside of the, the Azure portal and that's probably the best place to do it you can you can uh, mess around with that here as well uh, but in any case, um, what I'm mostly going to be interested in here is on the device itself. So the device here allows me to do two things. I can send a device to cloud message uh, or set of messages from this, uh, and I can also um, I can also send messages to this. But I actually want to do that from the Azure portal. Is conceptually be a little bit clearer here. But to send messages to the uh, device to cloud messages, I'm going to send send D2C messages to IoT Hub. Now, notice I can do cloud to device messages to this device as well, but I can uh, do that from Azure Portal as well. So that's what I'm going to do it from that side once I start doing it. So let's send up some messages to Azure uh, by using device to cloud messages from uh, to IoT Hub. So I'm going to be doing it from device one. And um, let's go ahead and minimize this right here just so I can see it. And this will you know, give me some uh, options here. You can you can give it um, you know some plain text. That's fine. Hello from Azure IoT Hub. And then I can send 10 messages, 100 messages, and they can do it on one second interval. So pretty straightforward there. And once you have that, you click send. And the next thing that I'll expect to see is those showing up down here inside of my um, listener on my service bus because I wired up that forwarder, that route to forward the messages onto my service bus. So each one of these messages here um, is going to be the hello from Azure IoT. So it, they're all the same, but uh, I, I got 10 new messages now uh, from my device simulator. So if I send those again, I will get even more messages inside of my listener here. And I'm just getting new messages as those come off of the Azure IoT Hub into the service bus. And this is a service bus listener using Service Bus Explorer. So you can see here the device simulator 
uh, inside of my uh, Visual Studio Code is sending messages from my device, really my laptop, but uh, the same principle would apply from you know an Arduino, a Raspberry Pi, or, or some other device that you're building that is a custom PCB, whatever that might be. So now that we've seen the device to cloud messages, to reverse that process and send cloud to device messages, I'm gonna use the portal to do this. Now, you can do it right here using this option, but uh, to me, it's a little bit more clear in my head if I'm using the browser, because I'm working in the cloud, uh, to send messages down to the device simulator, which is you know, this particular instance of Visual Studio code right here. So I can start receiving C2D messages by selecting this option here. It's just gonna print them here in the console. So to do that, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna come over here. I've already got one wired up, so I can just click send message and it's going to send messages. Now to get to this screen, it's pretty straightforward. You just come over here, pick your device and then hit message to device. And you can type in whatever you want, test one, two, three, and send the message on. And that will send the message down to your uh, device simulator right here. And so you can see here's the first one I sent. And here's the second one I sent. And it's just printing back the telemetry that I sent. Now you can use um, key value pairs as well if you want to add some data to that. Or you can just do you know the raw data, it could be you know, JSON encoded, XML, whatever it might be in the message payload, or you can use the the properties that are available to you as well. But in any case, you have that body that you can kind of shape to whatever your heart's content may be. So this is how you do the two-way communication using devices on Azure IoT Hub, and we're going to be exploring this more in depth as we look at other ways to broker messages, particularly around IoT Edge, which will give you a lot more options for what you can do with uh, messaging and, and broker messaging and also filter things and other things like that. But in any case, we'll get into more of that in, in future videos when we look at that. But this is just kind of the basics of setting up devices and messages going to and from devices uh, from the cloud and then seeing those being consumed on the cloud side by a service bus then ultimately something listening to that service bus which we saw today. If you like this content please consider checking us out online at www.windelect.com where you can find several blog entries about topics related to Microsoft Azure and software development and you can also subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button below and then clicking on the bell icon to receive notifications when new content becomes available. Until next time, thanks.